Gabriel Wildau joins us, Senior Vice President at Tanea. Gabriel, nice to have you on board with us. And I just mentioned this poll that we saw on the back of the debate, uh, Biden's lead stretching out on uh, President Trump's. Uh, what does it mean if we do see a change in the White House for U.S.-China relations? It's great to be with you today. Um, I think the big picture is that there's a bipartisan consensus in Washington that uh, the pre-Trump approach to China, the one that governed the, the Bush and Obama administrations, wasn't working and that a more confrontational approach was necessary. But within those broad boundaries, uh, I think there is room potentially for President Biden to uh, seek to at least stabilize the relationship and possibly to improve it at least somewhat, given the extreme measures that we've seen from Trump, particularly over the last few months as the election campaign has, has heated up. I think there could be some opportunity for President Biden to, uh, to, to seek to at least draw, uh, to, to set a floor under the relationship, which seems to be in free fall at the moment. If nominee Biden does take the White House, uh, you do point out there could be some constraints on rollback, and we have a self-declared president who is a tariffs man. Does that mean that Biden, if he became president, could actually be a tariffs man as well, whether he wants to or not? I think that's right. It, it's hard to imagine that if a President Biden or President Hillary Clinton had been in power over the last four years, that, that he or she would have imposed the, the, the Trump trade war tariffs. But with those tariffs in place, I think it will be politically difficult for President Joe Biden to reverse them, especially given the, the lack of progress we've seen from the Chinese side in terms of implementing the, uh, the purchase agreements included in the phase one U.S.-China trade deal. China's way behind the pace that they need to meet in order to, to, uh, to uh, fulfill those commitments. And so in that environment, I think Biden will find it difficult to, to roll back tariffs because he, he could be accused, he would be vulnerable uh, to charges that he's quote unquote soft on China. But again, within that constraint, there may be, there may be space for President Biden to, to for example, increase the, the, the range of products that are excluded from official tariffs. So you keep the headline tariffs in place you could expand the exclusions. Exclusions would have already been granted under Trump. You could expand those, and that would provide some relief to U.S. consumers and U.S. companies, while to some extent insulating Biden from that soft on China charge. Gabriel, I want to know how we think about the social media platforms, the fight over TikTok and WeChat. You know, we think about the Democrats uh, typically seen as closer to Silicon Valley, and those that we've spoken to from the tech scene are a little bit cautious about how onerous these changes are for social media. They think that it, once you start tackling where data should be stored, that it could, un, in fact, uh, uncover a whole heap of problems for some of those Silicon Valley names. So what would you expect a, a Biden presidency, if it happens, to mean for the measures against uh, the likes of WeChat and TikTok? I think we could expect a President Biden to be somewhat more sympathetic to the concerns of the business community, including the concerns of tech companies in Silicon Valley. So one of the remarkable characteristics of the Trump administration is the extent to which he's been willing to press his case against China uh, and to apply these tough measures, even in the face of, of complaints uh, from from Silicon Valley about, about lost revenue or, or um, U.S. exporters, whether it's in the semiconductor industry or, or uh, software industry that, that are losing revenue as a result of export controls. Um, under a Trump administration, I mean, under a Biden administration, I, I think the, the situation could be similar to, to, to what we discussed with tariffs, where it's, it's going to be politically difficult for, for, uh, for Biden to uh, completely roll back the, uh, the TikTok and WeChat bans. He may rely on the courts to achieve that for him. Again, it's hard to believe he would have applied those bans on his own. But uh, given the pending court challenges against the executive orders that ban WeChat and TikTok, we, we, we might see a President Biden defend those bans less aggressively and allow the courts to, uh, to hold them up or even strike them down um, so that he could, again, avoid that soft on China accusation. Gabriel Wildau, thank you very much for joining us, Senior Vice President at Taneo. Well, circling back to our top story, President Trump's medical team says his condition is improving.